Did you know that the first McDonald's was built in 13th century London? Well, good, because it wasn't. But fast food was still as prevalent as ever in bigger towns and cities across medieval Europe, though it was understandably different from the modern drive through experience. So let's talk about that. In the modern world, the need for fast food spurs from convenience and often laziness or lack of culinary skill. But back then, there were many people who just couldn't afford their own kitchen. Thus, cook shops and street food were established to meet that need. London was most notable for its street side cuisine, and it's where most of my data for this video comes from. Now, cook shops were different from a restaurant as their primary purpose was to prepare and serve food, but not to include space for eating. Customers would place their order or sometimes even bring their own freshly bought ingredients and have the shop cook it for them. When their order was ready, they'd come and pick it up and eat their food elsewhere, whether it was in the comfort of their home or simply on the street if they needed a quick bite. I'm not sure how they kept track of all the orders, and I imagine there were many occasions where meals were mixed up, but hey, somehow they managed. Another funny part of this style of food was sometimes a customer would try their prepared meal and decide, ew, this did not taste as good as I thought. And since it'd be an awful waste to just throw it to the pigs, they'd actually walk down the street calling out what they bought and try to pawn it off to hungry passersby instead. I can only imagine someone in a McDonald's shouting six piece nugget meal with sweet and sour sauce, come get fresh chicken nuggets, five dollars. That'd for sure get you either kicked out or at least into some minor legal trouble. Another common place to find a quick meal was your local tavern or alehouse, not the same thing by the way. In addition to serving drinks, they often had larger kitchens to provide further sustenance for their patrons as well. As for what was normally eaten in these establishments, it ranged from weedy breakfast pancakes and wafers to sweet or savory pies and hot cakes, and even sweets. Meat pies were especially common for their ease of transport and consumption. Another notable difference from a modern fast food is how these meals were made based on price. Anyone could order a meat pie, but the more they paid for it, the better it tasted and the fancier the ingredients that were included. A cheap meat pie might taste quite bland with lower quality meat and flour used, and maybe a pinch of salt, while a more expensive pie would include seasonings like cinnamon or nutmeg and use fresh pork or rabbit. Lots of what we consider basic household seasonings you could find at your local grocery store were reserved for knights and nobility, being much harder to come by. This doesn't mean peasant food was flavorless, but it was perhaps much more natural tasting. While there was a need to make sure the food you paid for was prepared in a clean and sanitary environment, it seems that most cook shops kept a fairly honest business. If there were crooked cooks using sketchy or long expired ingredients, they'd be reported and possibly publicly executed. Seems street cuisine scams were dealt with swiftly and harshly. I'll talk more about animals in my next video, but as for some of the common meats used in daily dishes, I found it pretty interesting. Rabbit was very common as an upper class meat, as there were workers called wariners who domesticated and bred rabbits like herds of cattle on a farm. I should also mention eels, since we're largely talking about London here. More on that in my Strange Currencies video if you haven't seen it. One of my earlier works, so pardon the difference in art style. Pork was also fairly common as pigs were sort of the cleanup service, and it was common for a household to have their own family pig to feed their leftovers and trash. When the pigs got older and big enough, you'd celebrate and have them for dinner. They sure didn't have pita or vegans back then. However, the medieval swine were not the pudgy pink oinkers we have today, as this was long before generations of further domestication. From what we see in manuscripts and read in historical records, medieval pigs were much larger, with tusks and covered in thick, quill-like hairs. If they got out of the yard, they quickly became a public nuisance, destroying property, invading homes, and eating fresh food from market stalls or a neighbor's kitchen. Thus, there were swine herders, responsible for rounding up loose pigs at night, or simply looking after them when the owners were busy and taking them out for a frolic in the woods. More on those poor sign rascals next time. This job didn't pay very well, but that's public service in a nutshell, and at least your job wasn't urine tasting. Yep. Medieval people were well aware of the dangers of consuming too much of the wrong food, or general overeating, and what we call diabetes they knew as honey disease, and the key symptom that preceded its diagnosis was sweet-tasting urine. 
Therefore, your average lord would have a personal team of a cook, physician, and urine taster, all male usually, who would look after their daily health. If the urine taster noticed his lordship's urine was sweeter than normal, he'd tell the cook and physician, who would then work together to adjust their lord's diet to fend off the dreaded honey disease. Not as weird to me after I understand the purpose of it, but I think more of its use for banter in a tavern setting. I imagine locals whining about their work when one pipes up and says, Oi, at least you're not tasting his lordship's piss every morning like my cousin. Make for some good roleplay in a D&D setting. All in all, fast food is much different from the cook shops and tavern food of old, but it'll always be around in some form or another. If you enjoyed learning about this, hit that like button, and make sure to leave a comment on your favorite part. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss future uploads. I'll see you for more futile facts very soon.